Are you still interested in learning more about some of the most controversial works of art of all time? This is the third video on this series about this matter. If you haven't watched the previous two, go watch it and then come back. If you have already, let's move on. Okay, hi everyone, this is Amanda Pontes again on artforall.tips and this is the third video on our series about the most controversial works of art of all time. One very controversial work of art is named My Bad and this is by Tracy Emin and this work is from 1998. This, this work was nominated by the Turner Prize, the same one which the Holy Virgin Mary, which I have mentioned on video number two, won. This, this one did not win the prize, but it was amongst the nominees. And this is a very controversial work, not only amongst the audience, but also amongst other artists, critics, and scholars. And why is that? It is named My Bad, and it consists of nothing but the bed itself with some other things amongst it, on top of it, and around it. And amongst these things, there is an ashtray full of ashes, dirty underwear and used condoms yes <laughs> well you understand why this was so controversial right still it was sold on an auction for more than four million sterling pounds in 1998 so probably more than that on current on current values well this work of art is not only not exactly beloved and appreciated by the audience in a whole, but also by other artists who think that Tracy is not exactly an artist per se, but that she is someone who knows how to sell herself and she's very good with marketing strategies. She knows how to create a buzz around her name. She would be more of an influencer or she would be more of a seller of her own persona more than an artist in itself. Therefore, not a unanimously beloved piece of art. Still a very famous one. Another one is Le Demoiselle d'Avignon by Pablo Picasso. This is probably the single most important work of art in Picasso's entire career. And I know that whenever I mention Picasso's name, I say that this is very important, this is iconic, this is historically groundbreaking. But the thing is, it's not that I am repetitive, or maybe I am, but that doesn't matter because every single one of Picasso's work has indeed been groundbreaking. And personally, I believe that he is the single most important artist in the 20th century. And this particular piece of work, Le Demoiselle d'Avignon, has been repeatedly being voted along with Marcel Duchamp's The Fountain. And there is a video on this channel about The Fountain. If you haven't watched it, go over there to watch it that as this, the most important work of art of the 20th century. This is the seed for Cubism. And this has been groundbreaking on so many levels. This is such an important piece of art that I couldn't even begin to talk about this work without being very superficial. Therefore, I'm going to make a separate video on Le Demoiselle d'Avignon. What I'm going to talk about here is why was it so controversial? Well, there are shades of Olympia on this one because Picasso was clearly portraying five prostitutes on a brothel in Barcelona, around Barcelona, somewhere in the Catalonia region. And also because of the shapes that he used. As I said, this is the main seed for cubism. He was using straight angles, straight lines, and all the distortions of space and depth that would eventually become Cubism's trademark were already present here. And this is the first time the general audience was faced with such complexity that would be the trademark of Cubism. It was the first time that this has been seen and used in such a clear way by Picasso. Also, the faces of the women that were inspired by African masks were also very shocking, to say the least, to the audience back then. And obviously the subject matter, five prostitutes portrayed mute, also caused controversy. And again, it is from Madame X to Olympia to finally La Demoiselle d'Avignon, it is interesting for us to think about how much controversy and scandal the female form, female nudity, causes up until this day. 
Another one, this time we are going way back in time. This is Michelangelo's The Final Judgment. And this was painted by Michelangelo along with his assistants for five years between 1536 to 1541. 25 years after he completed the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo went back to the Vatican as he was called to paint this fresco which would be on the altar of the Vatican. So it wasn't just any altar, it was the Vatican's main altar. Can you even begin to imagine the responsibility lying on his shoulders? Well, and he painted this marvelous piece. But the thing is, there were two main controversies regarding this piece. The first one was the way he portrayed Jesus himself. He portrayed it not in the way that the great masters of the past usually portrayed Jesus with respect and deference. He portrayed Jesus in a pagan style that was normally used for mythological figures. He portrayed Jesus beardless. No. He didn't have a beard and his body was portrayed as they normally would portray mythological figures and not saints. So can you imagine finding yourself looking at the Vatican's altar and seeing Jesus, beardless, pagan style, surrounded by 300 nude men. It was so scandalous that afterwards, pieces of leaves and fabric were later added to the original piece in order to cover the more indecent parts of human anatomy. Later on, on the 19th century, as this piece was restored, they removed the pieces of leaves and fabrics that were put on top of their indecent parts of human anatomy and they made it completely naked as Michelangelo intended them to be. We are going to talk about two works but I'm going to talk about those two put together because they were both made by the same painter, the greatest master of the masters, Caravaggio, the master of the chiaroscuro of the light and dark. And those are also both religious representations. The first one is St. Matthew's and the Angel from 1602. Actually, Caravaggio's life is almost as a scandal as his works, well, perhaps more so, as he died in exile accused of murder. Okay, but why, was, why were those two portraits so scandalous? Well, on this one, St. Matthew's and the Angel, the model for St. Matthew's was a beggar, a street beggar. He got a street beggar and he painted St. Matthew's exactly like the beggar looked. It was a perfect model that he represented faithfully. Not only that, but the beggar was barefoot and his feet were very, very dirty. Not only that, but St. Matthew's in this picture is trying to read something and he is kind of looking at the angel as the angel is saying something to him. What Caravaggio was trying to imply was that St. Matthews was illiterate. He actually couldn't read and therefore the angel was the one who was reading to him and as, as the angel read he was telling St. Matthews what was written because St. Matthews couldn't read himself. So can you imagine getting, they're trying to represent St. Matthews and portraying him as an illiterate street beggar? And the second Caravaggio work that I have selected is The Death of the Virgin, which is a representation of the scene of the death of Mary in the Bible, Mary, Mother of Jesus. And this one was actually commissioned for the Santa Maria della Scala Church in Rome, and it was rejected. The church decided not to keep it because of the way that Maria's body was presented. It was not again painted with respect, with deference, usually reserved for saints and religious figures. The body of Mary is showed in a very realistic, almost gruesome, I could say there is a touches of gore in that representation, as she has swollen limbs, there are lots of bruises, there are purple, purple patches all, all over her her skin and she is lying on such a position that makes it clear that there is no life on that body anymore and therefore this image was rejected by the church that thought that that was a disturbingly inappropriate way to portray the death of Mary the mother of Jesus. Remember that we spoke on the previous video about Peace Christ and the Holy Virgin Mary, those two um, non-controversial and groundbreaking and also very scandalous way of portraying religious figures, Caravaggio 
so many centuries ago was actually opening the doors and paving the path for many other artists after him to portray religious figures in humanistic and more realistic approaches. If you are enjoying this series, stay with me because there are more videos coming along for us to continue talking about some of the most controversial works of art of all time.